Hey everybody, what we're going to do today is go over experiment four where we determine the uh, empirical formula of a hydrate. And so what we've got is a copper chloride hydrate. Uh, and you can see on the bottle it says CUX, CLY, and then H2O uh, with the Z in front. Those X, Y, and Z are variables that we're going to be able to figure out. Now, by now, hopefully what we recognize is that we could think about these X, Y, and Z as being a certain number of atoms in the molecule, but most of the time we think about them in moles. And so that's our, uh, what we're gonna try to do. So uh, in this process, uh, in the procedure that we do, what you wanna think about is, what are we doing in this procedure to determine each of these different parts individually? We're gonna be measuring some of them directly and some of them indirectly, all right? I had a crucible. Okay, so this is a little, this little cup is a crucible, a little porcelain crucible. Uh, and uh, what I did is I weighed this and it weighed 10.66 grams, all right? Then our procedure said to measure out uh, about a gram of our green uh, copper chloride hydrate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna gently heat this up over a Bunsen burner. And that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, and it wants us to uh, heat it gently. So I wouldn't want to just let the Bunsen burner just sit underneath it at a high heat. You're actually going to be moving it kind of back and forth um, as we heat it up. And what's going to happen is we're going to look for a color change for when our green substance uh, turns brown. Okay. If you're doing this in lab, obviously we don't have smell o vision yet. Uh, but if you were doing this in the lab, uh, you would want to make sure that, that the, uh, it doesn't start to smell like a pool. It doesn't smell like chlorine in here. That means you're heating it up too much. All right. Um, so that's the idea. Um, so what I'll do in a moment, I'll start lighting the Bunsen burner. Uh, and then when I'm done, what I'll do is I'll come back and uh, I'll show you what it looks like uh, afterwards. But it'll be kind of a tannish brown when we're done. All right. All right, everybody, we're back. And uh, this is what the copper uh, anhydrous, uh, the anhydrate looks like. So you can kind of see a big difference in the, uh, in the color from what it started out as. Um, here's a definitely more of a tan kind of color. And then here was the, uh, the green stuff. All right, so definitely a big difference there. Um, the mass of my crucible plus the anhydrate uh, was 11.48 grams. So uh, when I did this after heating it, it actually in the instructions, just so you guys know, um, said to cover it with this crucible uh, top and uh, let it cool down for about 15 minutes. The top is gonna help so that when you're doing this, that it doesn't, uh, anhydrate, the anhydrate doesn't absorb water from the atmosphere and change our mass there. So, uh, that's um, that, that was kind of an important piece there. Uh, now it's telling us uh, to take this and then we're gonna dump this into a 50 milliliter beaker. Um, and we're, there's still a little bit of stuff in there. So we're gonna rinse this a couple times with uh, some water. Uh, and then we're actually gonna dissolve um, our solid there. So it might seem kind of weird that we heated this up so that we get rid of all of the water. Um, and then now we're gonna dissolve it. Uh, but what we had to do is we had to figure out how much water was, how many waters were attached in our original sample. All right, how many moles of water. So we've got our solution here and uh, you may notice, well, it's hard to tell with the sun coming in. Uh, but uh, this is turning kind of a, a green, greenish color, uh, similar to what we had when we, when we had original, when it was a hydrate. And uh, it's a little bit hard to tell with the uh, morning sun coming in. Um, that's what we have. So we're going to dissolve this, okay, we're going to dissolve all of our solute, and it's pretty much all dissolved with that small amount of water, which is great. Uh, next, what we're going to do is, there we go, we get to see the green color there. Um, what we're going to do now, now that we have our copper uh, in the ion form here uh, dissolved, we're going to take a piece of aluminum, going to kind of curl it around a little bit to try to get it in here. 
um, and have the aluminum react with the copper and have the copper come out as a solid, which is a little oxidation reduction reaction. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of try to curl this around here a little bit and set this in to our beaker and have the copper react with the aluminum and um, see how that looks there. So you can see it's reacting super vigorously um, and uh, when the reaction stops, a couple of ways that we're gonna kind of know that. One, we're not gonna see this vigorous reaction that we see having, that's happening here. Um, also, the solution that was green should be colorless then, all right? So we'll let this continue to react, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna filter off the uh, copper that uh, is forming as a solid, all right? All right, so I've got uh, a lot of our copper off here, kind of sitting on the bottom and on the beaker itself here. Um, and uh, this is a little bit of the copper wire, or excuse me, the uh, aluminum wire that was left in there. Um, it actually sort of formed around it so, uh, and kind of stuck to it, I actually had to use my fingers to kind of try to scrape it off there, which isn't really great lab technique, but I uh, kind of knew the solution itself wasn't super harmful, so that's what I did. Uh, and then so I did something like this. I uh, had a little copper on my finger, so then I just rinsed that off into the beaker there. Um, I'm thinking about maybe using a different form of aluminum, even though that's the uh, what the procedure called for. So anywho, uh, what we're gonna do now is take this, and we're gonna filter this um, uh, through our Buchner funnel. So I'm gonna add some water uh, into uh, our Buchner funnel, I've already got the filter paper in there. Uh, so adding the water uh, when we start the funnel, again, is gonna help that uh, filter paper really seat down over the holes in the Buchner funnel. Uh, and then uh, when we start to filter, nothing is gonna get under that filter paper. All right. Dump that in there. We're gonna give it a couple rinses. Get all the copper out of the beaker. Give that little swirl, that last little bit was kind of stuck on there. Dump that in. Looks pretty clean. I've got some ethyl alcohol here that I'm gonna pour in. Your lab procedure says to weigh it out, but uh, not super critical or measure it out. It's not super critical how much you put in. I just put a little bit in. Uh, we're gonna let this run and get this dry. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer our copper onto a weigh boat that for us, not a weigh boat, but a watch class that we measured uh, the mass. Uh, transfer that copper onto the uh, watch class and then uh, find the difference to figure out how much copper we have. All right, everybody, just showing you the last couple steps that we did after running our sample through the Buchner funnel. We removed the uh, paper here uh, and transferred all the copper that was here onto a watch glass. We had weighed the watch glass uh, and then uh, we put the uh, uh, copper on it, put it under the heat lamp. I think it says about 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, turn off the heat lamp because uh, that's actually very, very hot. Uh, under that heat lamp, but our copper is nice and dry. And when we weighed it, the watch glass had a mass of 28.67. When we added the copper to it, and we just weighed it a moment ago, it weighed 29.03 grams. So now you've got all the measurements that you need uh, to be able to calculate your 
uh, mole ratios uh, and come up with a formula for our hydrate. All right, thanks for watching all the videos.